Thank you, Chamberlain, and welcome back to Abuja. Standing by with me are two gentlemen, uh, Mr. Baba Usman and Galzama, who is the Secretary General of the Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, and Barrister Emmanuel Agbako, the Chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association in the Makodi branch. You're very welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we've heard uh, extensive reaction to uh, the recent statements uh, given by the Minister of Defense, uh, Minister Dan Ali, concerning uh, the, uh, the purported uh, or the planned or the hoped for, should I say, uh, suspension of the anti-open grazing laws in some states. Now, I know you have your positions on, uh, in response. Uh, what is your position, Mr. Usman? Uh, well, I would like to start by saying that as a leader, uh, we should always talk objectively. Sentiments aside, politics aside. Uh, laws, I stand to be corrected by the barista. Laws are supposed to bring peace and harmony in a particular society. So wherever a law is intended, it is intended to solve a problem. But there is a law in Benway that has not solved a problem. Instead of solving it, it has further aggravated uh, the embers, embers of hatred in Benway State, resulting to loss of lives and properties. So today, if we want to talk, we have to talk objectively because people's lives are at stake. Pupils are living their lives by the day, and after all, if you if you look at the the implementation, uh, who is winning out of this law? Because I can vividly remember uh, on the eve of the implementation, the governor said it's going to be a win-win situation. But today, let's reflect and see who is a winner out of this law. Nobody, nobody is a winner. The farmers are not winners. So also the pastoralists are not winners. Even the government, government is not winning because people are losing their lives by the day. People are taken out of their comfort zones, kept in IDP camps. The government mega resources is overstretched instead of providing services uh, to the people of Benway. Mega resources are now directed to maintaining IDPs. So if you look at all these things, nobody is a winner. So. Uh, it's not working as a solution. But so we have, we have to have a workable solution to solve this problem. M Mr. Usman, when you look at the reality that even before uh, these laws were uh, implemented, yeah. uh, we had these killings uh, by purported uh, herdsmen. Now, that is being cited as uh, the reason why there is such opposition to the statement made by the minister, because they feel that since the killings occurred beforehand, that the suspension of such would not be the solution. Now, if that is the position, uh, how, what do you say to those who feel that the Minister of Defense is essentially siding uh, with uh, members of your association and those uh, who are against the law? Oh, well, you see, uh, the minister has made his comments. Uh, but me, I'm speaking objectively from the point of view of my association. Not only the minister, even the State House of Assembly in Benway has to review, look at this law, because it's not working for anybody. It's not working for anybody. It's not working for the pastoralists. It's not working for the farmers. It's not working for the government. It's not serving the purpose for which it, is, uh, it was uh, intended. So it's, it's failing. It's not working as a solution. So let's find another solution. I know very well, even before the promulgation of the law, there were crises in Benue State, definitely. But is it as, uh, as bad as it is today? It's even getting worse with the law. It's mm. getting worse with the law. So this clearly indicates that there is a problem with the law. Barrister Abako, I know you're waiting to respond. Please go ahead. Yes, um, thank you very much. I must commend uh, Baba Usman and I respect his uh, views on this issue. Uh, but let me say that in a democratic setting, conduct of persons is regulated by law. Indeed, the president is a product of democracy and as such a product of law. The minister, including the honorable minister of defense, is a product of law. Without law, there is no democracy. Without law, there will be anarchy. 
And so laws are made for the purposes of peace and orderliness in society. Uh, so, but when you come to the anti-open grazing law passed by the Benue State House of Assembly, before the law could be tested, before the implementation of the law, and it is only the implementation of the law that we tell us that the law has brought peace or otherwise to the state. Before the implementation of the law, Mi'ati Allah had said they were going to make Benue State ungovernable as a result of the law. And if the law was not rescinded, they would go ahead and invite all headers from wherever they could to come and make Benue State ungovernable. You see, they were rather using the law to bring restiveness in Benue State. And when comments such as uh, have been made by the Minister of Defense come from very high quarters, it calls for concern by all Nigerians because we're looking at it as the, the security chiefs with the president coming together to bring in a position contrary to the tenets of democracy. Mm. Uh, for the average Nigerian, some herdsmen, uh, sorry, some, so, some Fulani men sat together to uh, put Nigeria asunder by way of refusing to comply with legitimately enacted law. You, know, you look at the composition of that meeting. Look at the president. Look at the uh, DGNI. Look at the uh, IGP. Look at the Minister of Defense. Fulani men coming together to put Nigeria in a state of anarchy uh, by Agbako. advising that a duly passed law be suspended. And look Be at that yes, sir. While, while I acknowledge uh, your, your, uh, the, the profundity of your assertions, mm. uh, you know, of course, there has been talk about uh, the lopsidedness uh, within the security architecture at the highest levels in this country. Yes. But there has also been a clearly defined alternative opinion that there are indeed uh, herdsmen uh, and other uh, members of the Fulani ethnic nationality who are not Nigerians coming in across the border from other countries. This has been verified by militaries uh, around the world. Uh, can you just limit it to a political elite uh, within Nigeria as opposed to some of these other verifiable realities that are out there at the moment? We're saying the same thing. We're saying, the same thing. We're saying that if the security operatives are all from the ethnic group that we look at as being responsible for the problems in Nigeria. And if they cannot carry out their constitutional responsibilities of blocking the leakages at the boundaries or elsewhere of, uh, through which these people would come into Nigeria, then how would they blame it? On, okay, the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What is his responsibility? What are his duties to protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria? Okay, it's of utmost importance. Barista, even now, all the security chiefs are supposed to do mm -hmm. that, and they have failed to do it. B and then they blame it on other people coming into the country. And so what are they doing? Barrister, let me, let me ask you. Oh, yes, sir. If we were to accept your assertions, mm. I, would, I would ask you how, when you look at what is happening in, for example, in Zamfara, mm. when you look at what is happening in Adamawa, when you look at what is happening in some of these other uh, states, mm. uh, it, it really calls into question this initial argument that suggests that the Fulani ethnic group within Nigeria, the elites within that group, are essentially uh, kind of uh, perpetuating a kind of ethnic war against the TIV. That was the initial accusation. We've seen it spread across the country. Does that not uh, in some ways refute what you're essentially alleging Not here? at all. Not at all. The summary of all that we are saying is that is a failure of government. It's a failure of, by section 14 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, the utmost concern of government is the security of lives and property of the citizenry. Mm. Uh, if any government fails to do that, and this government is showing us that it has failed to do that, then the government has failed. And so we are saying that if this is happening in Benue, in Taraba, in uh, Adamawa, in uh, here, there, 
It's a failure of government, mm. and there is no manifestation other than that. Mr. Okay. Usman, I want to go back to uh, Barristan Bako's original statement, uh, which was pretty clear uh, in his view that it was indeed uh, the statements made by your association, the Mieti Ala uh, Cattle Breeders Association, uh, to the effect that if the law was put in place, that Benue would become ungovernable. That was not made by my association. So you're, you're refuting that directly? That was not made by my association. In, in, but have, have your, has your association not made any kinds of threats? We didn't. We didn't. We are a peace lobbying association. We are for peace. We are civilized. We always guard our utterances. We have not said that. That statement is not credited to our association. Maybe some other association, not Mieti Allah Cattle Breed Association. Okay. Uh, it, we know that, of course, Mieti Allah has two uh, kind of legs. Uh, Kao Tohore is, is another one. I know that many of the statements have been attributed to that particular branch. Yeah. But let me, let's even talk about the allied branch here, because, again, it's, it's, uh, similar, it's under a similar umbrella. If those, when those statements were made, and he's saying that those essentially ignited the kinds of violence we've seen since the establishment of the law. Uh, how, to what extent should your uh, umbrella group take responsibility for what's happening there? Well, you see, um, Benue has been a problem area even before, the, uh, even before the coming of the current governor. We have been having problems in Benue uh, even during the time of Suswan. And when autumn came in, there was also a problem regarding this Palma pastoral because the crises were not managed very well. And if I can go by the statement of the barista saying that the Fulani elites are coming together to fight, that is a wrong notion. It's, it's totally, entirely wrong. I am happy that we mentioned what is taking place in Katana and Zamfara. So we have crisis. People are losing their lives in Zampara State. But that doesn't detract from the fact that it's focused, it's concentrated heavily in Benue, though. You say? That does not take away from the fact that it's still concentrated very heavily yes, in the food basket. Yes, 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 yes. But you see, this, is, this, is, this, is the, the, this crisis is further aggravated by the law. I told you there was a crisis even before the law. But with the enactment of the law, the crisis mm. became so high that just look in a, in a span of just 40 days mm. now. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Usman, I'm going to certainly allow you to conclude your thought, but we just have to take a very short break. Our viewers, please do stay with us.